Hello, good morning. Well, it's morning here. I don't know when you're watching this, but it's morning. If I'm looking a little sleepy, it's because I am. I had COVID and it knocked my socks off. We're recovering. But it's like almost the end of the first week of January and I really wanted to come to you with my favorite reads from 2022 before we're like so deep in 2023 that it doesn't matter anymore. Are we already there? Maybe. Um, I'm going to go through my top 10 reads of 2022 and then I'm also going to mention some honorable mention. These are in order. I ranked these. So we're going to start at number 10 and then we're going to go to number 1. It's like quite a mix of genres. I feel like I had overall like a good reading year in terms of just like a nice mix of things. My favorite genre overall probably was horror. I read some really, really good horror. I made like a point to read more horror because my horror novel, No Child of Mine, comes out next year and so I wanted to be like you know up on up on all the things so do you know that there's quite a few horror novels in here in the honorable mentions too but let's get into my top 10 favorites so my 10th favorite number in number 10 in 10th place is the last thing he told me by laura dave this was one of my first books of the year i actually had a great reading month in january because i was reading booktubers favorite books from the previous year i'm doing it again this year i'm currently in the process of reading books from people's favorites back in january and i'm really excited about it because i had some really good reads from that last year i think there's a couple of them from this list that are from that video or that video series i think i did a couple of them but the last thing he told me is a mystery thriller I would say more of a mystery like it it's a little less of like that like thriller high paced vibe but it's about this woman and she's living on a houseboat in Sausalito with her new husband and her stepdaughter they got married like fairly recently and his first wife had died like years previously and so that's kind of the relationship she winds up marrying into and it is about one day she gets a note from her husband like passed to her from one of he's a high school teacher no he's not he's a coach of some sort I read this a year ago and she gets a note and it just says like take care of her her being the stepdaughter and um then he disappears he's vanished and there's like the FBI become involved and like there's all sorts of things happening his like past is unfurling and she's like trying to figure out what's going on what happened like why does she, like how can she best keep this stepdaughter safe all of this stuff and I think the reason this became one of my favorites of the year was I loved the relationship it explored between the stepdaughter and stepmother I thought it was really interesting I thought the mystery was really fun they kind of like they start in Sausalito in California but then they wind up most of the book takes place in Texas in Austin and I just like really enjoyed the relationships and the mystery it felt like something very new that I hadn't read before and was really enjoyable then in ninth place is my girls they're right back there can you see them they're right there um it's a, a series but my favorite is Daisy Hates which is the second book in the series the series of four books I have now as of recording this video read the fourth book my, uh, Daisy Hates Long The Great Undoing Daisy Hates The Great Undoing um which is <laughs> the second in her books I did a whole vlog going through these I thought I was gonna hate them and I like absolutely love them like I adore them they are it's a series of four books it's an independently published Sometimes it's called a romance, and I think romances are at the center of the story, but I would say more than that, it's like a drama. It feels very much like a teen drama, like a CW show, but it takes place in London High Society. It feels very gossip girly, um, and we have five different POVs. <laughs> the book is structured a little strangely. We have five different POVs. In the first book, the Magnolia Parks book, we're following Magnolia Parks and BJ Ballantine, and these two are like star-crossed lovers who have been in love since they've been children, but they can't make it work. <laughs> We love them. Bless their little cute, little stupid hearts. And then in the other book, we're following three other characters. We're following Daisy, Christian, and Julian. And Daisy and Julian are brothers, and Daisy and Christian are, like, in a little bit of a romance. And the books alternate, so we get, like, a Magnolia book, and then a Daisy book, and then a Magnolia book, and a Daisy book. But the books cover, like, books one and two cover the same time period, approximately, and books three and four cover the same time period. And there's, like, lots of crossover and lots of intersection. It's, like, a strange book it's something that on paper I wouldn't think I would like but I'm just like absolutely obsessed with the way it's written it's written in this like very unique almost like conversational sort of style I really like it I love the characters I love the drama like it's just so much fun and then in eighth place this is why I refuse to do my favorites video until the actual end of the year because this video or this book I read on Christmas Eve like we were days from the end of the year and I read Woman Eating by Claire Coda 
this is a literary horror heavy emphasis on the literary i would barely call it a horror the only reason that it's a horror is there's like a lot of blood involved because it follows a vampire the uh woman eating follows the story this young woman she's a vampire and she's kind of out on her own for the first time her mother is a vampire as well and growing up her mother kind of took care of all the vampire things they needed to do like her mother was the one that was like in charge of obtaining blood she can't go out in the sun because like it burns her skin very quickly and like not like in a burn to ashes sort of way but like in a really bad sunburn sort of way and so she's out on her own for the first time and she's trying to kind of navigate the world and i just feel like it's a very short little no novel but i feel like it just so beautifully touches on so many issues and like really delves into them in a really unique way the young woman is an artist so we have a lot of conversations around like art and what is art and like who's in charge in art and also like what it is to be like a young woman and like the power dynamics of her being a young woman but also being like a vampire and kind of that like inversion of the power dynamics there and there's a lot of conversations around like morality and like religion and like good and evil and um on like food and eating and body image and it's like a very short book but it like beautifully delves into so many topics like i said i think it like very much is like a literary book like if you were looking for like a vampire type classic vampire book I don't think this is the book for you um but it is a good time I really loved it I thought it was brilliant and then in seventh place we have my queen my love Miss Emily Henry with book lovers I love book lovers because I love Emily Henry it is gorgeous it follows Nora and Charlie Nora is a literary agent and Charlie is a book editor they both live in New York they're both like very good at their jobs and Nora winds up taking a long vacation, like a six-week vacation, with her sister to this small town in the Carolinas, where, guess what, Charlie is there, too. And they, like, kind of have, like, a rivals situation initially, like, their first couple encounters, I think, back in New York, were kind of, like, tense. But, like, very quickly, they become friendly with each other, and then that friendliness blooms into something more. I think people's biggest complaints with this is that it doesn't really focus a lot on the romance. Like, a lot of the storyline is following this relationship between Nora and her younger sister, Libby. But I really enjoyed that. I think we get a lot of good exploration of, like, older sister dynamics. And I'm always here for a mean oldest sister with an end name. We've got my big three. Emily Henry, Sarah J. Mass, and uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid all have one. And I love them all. I love Nora, I love Nesta, and I love Nina from Melby Rising. So, I'm about it. It was a good time. I, like, truly will adore every book Emily Henry writes because that's the law. Law of the land. Um, switching gears, my number five book is another one from that January video, and it's Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is Chanel Miller's memoir. Chanel Miller, if you're not familiar, is the victim in the Brock Turner Stanford sexual assault case and she released that like victim impact statement back in 2015 2016 i believe that went like mega viral and this is really her experience from the night of the assaults kind of all the way through the trial and she kind of talks about just how difficult it was as a sexual assault survivor to go through that entire process and just kind of the experience of recovering from the sexual assault and like the effects it had on her life like emotionally and mentally as well as the the way that participating in the criminal justice system around her assault really shaped that recovery and shaped that it's gorgeous i think it's a really important story and i think if you are able to like handle it i think you should read it i was like very worried going into it that it would feel like very traumatic as a reader to read um and I think Chanel Miller, I mean, she, like, discusses it very frankly and honestly, and I think it is difficult, but the goal is never to, like, traumatize you as the reader. Like, her goal isn't to make it difficult to read. Her goal is to just share her story, and I think that really comes through, um, and I think it's really beautifully told. I really, really thought it was an important book, and I was really happy that I had read it. And then number five spot, did I say this was number five? I don't know. I'm really bad at counting. I apologize, guys. <laughs> Next spot, I have Call Me By Your Name by Andre Osman. This book was, like, such a surprise. Like, I was surprised at how much I adored this book. I thought it was just absolutely brilliant. I've, of course, heard of this book. It is an older book. I think it came out in, like, the 90s, early 2000s. Um, it follows this young man. There's a movie by the same name based on this book. With Tim Timothy Chalamet, which is probably where you've, like, seen or heard of it if you are, like, not... I feel like that's, it's like more prevalent in pop culture to have that conversation than the book. But maybe you're cooler and smarter than me and you don't know things just because Timothy Chalamet was in the movie. It's possible. But this book follows the story of this young man. I think he's 17 at the 
the time of the book in it takes place most of the book takes place over this one summer this young man lives in Italy with his parents um, in this like small coastal Italian town and every summer they take on their family takes a graduate student in and they live with the graduate student lives with their family for the summer and like does research and does all this stuff and so it's the story of this young man and kind of his like first love I would I would say uh, he falls in love with one of these graduate students that come and stay with him and um, it is about their their romance over the course of the summer and it is just beautiful like it is just a stunningly written book about these two young men um falling in love and being in the italian like the the language around like the italian summer countryside is just like stunning stunning it was just like brilliant i read it in a single afternoon it's like a very short novel but just like oh my gosh like gorgeously written like absolutely stunning heartbreaking but like beautiful absolutely loved it um there is some content so be aware of that especially like the young man is 17 and then the grad student is 24 so like do be aware there is you know that happening and there's also some like other stuff there's definitely some content so i would look up i mean i think you should always be cognizant of content things but that is um one of the bigger ones for this this novel but it's just like total t beautiful 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 um i know that there's a sequel that has come out like pretty recently I and mean, i don't know if i'm gonna read it i think the first one wrapped up so beautifully that i don't feel like i need more even though it is one of my top five favorites from this year okay next up we have conversations with friends by sally rooney Ugh, i loved this book because i feel like normal people get a lot of hype and like i read normal people last 2021 or 2020 a couple years ago and I enjoyed it I thought it was really well written I thought it was good but I didn't understand like the hype around it honestly Sally Miss Rooney if you're listening I enjoy the tv show slightly more they're both brilliant but like Paul Mescal he had my heart and I like just like didn't totally understand the hype I was like normal people was good but it wasn't like I'm gonna sell my soul good People, like, love Sally Rooney. She's, like, a cult following. And then I read Conversations with Friends, and, like, I get it. Conversations with Friends is brilliant. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was stunningly written. I thought it was, like, deep, this, like, deeply intimate portrait of this young woman. So let me tell you what Conversations with Friends is about. So it's about these two young women um, whose names I cannot remember. We've got Frances, and then we've got Bobby, Bobby, Francis and Bobby, and they're like friends, and they perform poetry together, but Francis is the one that like writes all the poetry, but she, Bobby is like a little bit more of a performer, so they wind up performing it together, but it's not these two, and these two, Francis and Bobby, wind up entering this like friendship with these old, this slightly older, as in like, I think they're probably in their 30s, a couple who are an actor and a writer, um, and they're a married couple. And Francis and Bobby befriend them, and then slowly Francis starts having a relationship with the husband. She starts having an affair with the husband. And it is sort of about that, but it's mostly just about like Francis being, she's like in university, kind of struggling to figure out like who she is. She's like a quieter person, um, is definitely like significant, she's like a super private. And it's about her like grappling with like pain and relationships and figuring out who she is and who she wants to be in these relationships and who she wants to be going forward and like learning how to assert herself. It is just like stunning. I thought it was just like such a beautiful intimate portrait of what it is to be kind of a young woman at this point in her life. I like related so much to Frances. I thought she was like a, a character I didn't I hadn't seen in literature a lot but it's someone I like hardcore related to I think she's like a hardcore Enneagram 5 and as a hardcore Enneagram 5 it's hard to find Enneagram 5 representation because Enneagram 5s you know what they don't like to do talk about themselves I'm also a Leo so those counter counterbalance each other but <laughs> I really loved it I thought it was brilliant stunningly written and like count me a member of the Sally Rooney fan club I still haven't read her newest book Beautiful World Where Are You but like will be you're actually currently sitting up uh, sitting atop a beautiful world where are you but i will be reading that probably this year hopefully this year because again count me as sally rooney devotee next another book that like now we're in like all-time favorites really truly i think these top four are like all-time favorite loved so much next we have the bell jar by sylvia plath i have been wanting to read this book since i was in high school and i've put it off and put it off and put it off and i'm so glad i finally read it because I was told again and again that The Bell Jar is just, like, such a depressing novel. And so I, like, you know, it just wasn't top of my list because I wasn't looking to be, like, seriously depressed. 
Um, and like the book deals with depression and like is a heavy book that deals with some like heavy topics but I also thought it was like laugh out loud funny I thought it was incredibly relatable I thought it was just like brilliant and accessible and like a classic that is delightful and enjoyable in every aspect of the the word enjoyable I thought it there were so many parts that were just like brilliant and like you know articulated something that is so hard to articulate but it's like a feeling that I've had like the and I'd read this passage before but the passage about the fig tree is like one of my favorite passages from literature period um I loved it so much it's about this young woman named Esther who when we open the novel she's doing this internship in New York for a magazine I believe and then as the internship ends she goes home and when she's at home she starts to get like pretty depressed and it's about her relationship with her mother and her relationship with herself and kind of how she like recovers from this depression um and she does recover I think that's a part that's like not talked about very often and I think oftentimes the story of Sylvia Plath who did tragically die via suicide kind of gets smushed in to the bell jar because there are a lot of aspects that people think that like it was semi-autobiographical this the story of the bell jar but Esther Greenwood gets better like the story ends hopeful no I don't know if that's a spoiler I think spoilers sometimes for a lot of books like this I don't think you're spoiled knowing how it ends like the book is about her like rediscovering that as long as her heart is beating and saying like I am I am I am like she's still here she still exists and it's like ugh, it's gorgeous and important and so so good and just brilliant I think everyone should read it I gifted it to my sister for Christmas because I think everyone should read it because it's really good I will mention that it was written in the 1950s you can tell that there are some pretty substantial um anti-semitic references um which i think you know you should be aware of going in and despite the fact that contextually they do kind of like make sense with the era i think it is something just to like point out and be like this is not great i think we can do both things i think you can still read this but i do think you should be aware of that and should be cognizant of the fact that although this is a product of its time it's still something that like isn't cool top two um number two is Last House on Needless Street by Katarina Ward. I adored this book. I mean, my mom, my mom read it. She didn't love it quite as much as me. Rude, mom. But this is a horror novel. This is a horror novel, and I, it's so hard to explain what this is about because I feel like till like the 40% mark, you don't really know what it's about, but we're following like a bunch of different perspectives, and we're kind of confused on who these perspectives are, and that's like part of the joy of this. I almost see enough this book at the like, 30% mark and I'm glad I pushed through because it's my number two favorite book of the year I just thought it was so stunningly done like so intricately woven together like twists upon twists but in a way that like everything that led up to these twists then suddenly made sense like all the confusion that came before was necessary in order for this twist to make sense it had me on the edge of my seat in like the climax it had everything I could want from like a thriller horror type novel it is twisty it is turny it is not for everyone like I said, my mom didn't love this book, but I thought it was just like truly like brilliant, stunning, spectacular, one of my favorite books of the year. And then my number one favorite book is one of my first reads from the year. I think it was like in the top. A lot of these were from January. Again, January had a great reading month. Hopefully this January again have a great meal reading month. But my favorite book of the year that I read last year it was Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. This is Dolly Alderton's first fiction book she had a memoir that came out before this that I have on my kindle currently and I've like read a couple of the the essays and it's an essay collection but ghost is a fictional story and it covers one year in this woman's life I think it is her 32nd year of life like it starts from her 32nd birthday and goes to the, her 33rd birthday if I recall but it is essentially about this woman she has like recently kind of um left a long-term relationship she's 32 and it's about how it's almost about this like this just the way in which all of her relationships in her life are changing. It talks about how her friendships are changing because some of her friends are getting engaged and married and some of them are having kids and some of them are also single but are like starting to like very desperately be seeking relationships. It's about her like her relationship with her parents because her parents are like starting to get older and what how that is changing her relationship with her parents. Um, it is about like her job it is about her romantic relationships and how what she's looking for in romantic relationships is changing now she's getting older and I just thought it was so brilliant I like just like stunning like the writing was incredible it felt it felt very much like if you watch Fleabag the television show it had like a very similar sort of like intimate portrayal into what it is to be a like woman in her 30s and 
also like I think of that British sense of humor and I like absolutely loved it I just like loved it it was my one of my favorite books of all time for sure and definitely my favorite book of the year okay so there's my top 10 um I'm just gonna like very quickly go through my some honorable mentions because I read a lot of books that I really 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 loved this year and although these were my top 10 I also had a couple others that I loved um one being Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed this is a like Russian dark fairy tale it's a horror novel it is like gross and graphic and delightful and like magical and like that fairy tale sort of way it follows this young woman who's the youngest of three sisters who are the last daughters of the last wizard in oblia a russian village and it is about her kind of escaping the abusive household that she lives in and there's like magic and ballerinas and um it is very like dark but also like i thought just like really brilliantly done um, I, on a much lighter note, I loved the Stemness novellas by Allie Hazelwood. I've talked about it a couple times, but I just, like, thought they were, like, such a, like, delightful little treat. They're, like, kind of silly, kind of cheesy, but they're also only, like, 100 pages. They're, like, an hour and a half read. And, like, what more could I want than these? My favorite was Below Zero, but, like, all of them were at least four stars. Like, such a good time. Another one, this one almost made the list. This would probably be like 11th place, maybe 12th, but My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book is stunning and brilliant. It is a contemporary fiction piece about this young woman that's told in two timelines, a timeline when she's 15 and then a timeline when she is 30, I believe. Um, and it's about this young woman who is has a relationship with one of her teachers, um, a inappropriate relationship, obviously. And it is about kind of that, that abuse of power. It is... As a 15 year old it is about her kind of how easily she falls on falls into this relationship and how you uh, the entire time Kayla with Russell does such a brilliant job towing this line between making you understand why a 15 year old would fall victim to this without in any way romanticizing the relationship like the entire time you can tell as the reader that this relationship is not like a true like romantic relationship but it is instead like an abusive relationship that is abuse of power but you can also understand why the 15 year old is so easily falling victim to it and then it is about her as a 30 year old kind of reflecting back upon that because now he has uh charges are being pressed against him for having a similar relationship with other students and is about her kind of like grappling with what that meant for her and we kind of see how this relationship has affected the rest of her life and it's just like stunningly written she did such a gorgeous job another really heavy one is the own out girls um by amy engel i believe um, this one is, again, super, super dark. Content warnings. Please look the content warnings up for this. It was darker than I was anticipating. It deals very heavily with abuse. I'm not going to go into details about what kind of abuse because I don't think um, YouTube would like that very much, but you should look up content warnings. It is about this young woman who returns to her grandparents' home in rural Kansas where she spent one summer because her cousin has gone missing, her adult cousin who's about the same age as her. Um, and it's about her kind of uncovering the abuse that has happened at the hands of her grandparents um, and just kind of the, the cycles of abuse that have happened. And it is horrifying, like makes you want to throw up levels of depraved but brilliant brilliantly done um i loved our wives into the sea i just talked about it in my last wrap up i read it in december it this is a literary horror a little bit more ho horror than the last literary hor horror i referenced but it is about these two wives and one of them goes on like a submarine mission and something goes wrong on the submarine mission and then she comes back and she's weird and so it's about her wife taking care of her and like trying to grapple with what strange things happened to her wife while she was under the sea. And then another horror that I loved was House Apollo. This is actually a YA horror. My sister gifted it to me for Christmas in 2021 and I read it in 2022. Absolutely stunningly brilliant. Just like this perfect com combination of like pretty and creepy. It follows these three sisters. They disappeared one new year's eve i think and we're gone for like a month and they showed back up and they were weird like their hair turned white their teeth were black and like i don't know their teeth were not black that's gross their eyes were black and they're like super pretty and they like seem to have these like compulse they like have these powers of like compulsion and they like eat and eat and eat but never get like are never satisfied but also like it doesn't like change the way they're looking 
just like absolutely gorgeous such a fun little ride a couple more I loved This Time Tomorrow by Emma Straub. This is a 13 going on 30. It's not a 13 going on 30, but it's like a slight time travel story, but like with so much heart. Loved it. Absolutely gorgeous. It is about this woman who on her, I think her 40th birthday, she went up, maybe it's not her birthday. I think it's just in her 40s. She went up going back in time to her 16th birthday. And um, it is about her, like, it's about her and her father mostly. It's about this father-daughter relationship. And, ooh, had me in tears. But, like, gorgeous, brilliant. Absolutely loved it. And then um, I also read Kindred by Octavia Butler, another time travel one that was just, like, stunning and brilliant and amazing. It's about this woman who is this black woman who, like, keeps accidentally time traveling to the ante antebellum South, so pre-Civil War South. Um, we find out why she's time traveling back to this time period. But it's very dangerous for her as a black woman to be in pre-Civil War South because she's a black woman. Um, and this book does one of the most brilliant jobs I've ever seen of humanizing this pre-Civil War period. And I think, I think one of the most brilliant things that stories can do as a whole is, as people, we are like, our brains are designed to be empathetic to stories more than they are to like numbers we can like logically understand something but to understand something on like an emotional level i think is important i think the stories does such a brilliant job of approaching slavery from like a modern disposition like this woman lives in like the 1990s 80s um and so like <laughs> is not accustomed to this there's nothing about this that seems like ordinary and it is about her just like experiencing the brutality of this time period from a first person perspective and i think it is stunning and important they just came out with a tv series on hulu i think and i'm like brilliant i'm like excited to uh watch it because it sounds like i loved the book i thought the book was gorgeous oh i loved Everyone in this room will someday be dead by Emily Austin. This is one of my favorite books I read this year. Like, again, honorable mention. Um, this, like, silly and hard story of this young woman who's struggling with, like, depression and anxiety and accidentally becomes the secretary of this Catholic church. And she is, like, a lesbian atheist. And it is, like, sweet and small and, like, deals with all these topics in such a way that is just, like, gorgeous. Love it. Another Katarina Ward, I absolutely love Sundial by Katarina Ward. It's another, like, twisty, twisty, turny one. This one's about, like, a mother-daughter relationship. Um, it is about this mother who winds up taking her daughter with her to her childhood home, which is called Sundial. It's this home in the desert. And she had, like, a very weird childhood. We learn more and more about it. But it's about her taking her daughter to the childhood home because she's worried her daughter has got some, like, psychopathic tendencies. And so... It's about her uh, dealing with that, and it's great. It's brilliant. I think Katarina Ward, I like this one slightly less than Last House on Needless Street, but, like, just barely. Like, still gorgeous, amazing, one of my favorites of the year. Those are all my honorable mentions. Those are, like, my favorite books of the year. I am so excited to do more reading this year because, like, love reading. It's always a good time. I've already read a 5-star and a 4.5 star. Um, so it's been a good year, and it's only the 6th, the 5th. So I'm excited to uh, keep reading. My reading goals for this year are the same as last year. I did not hit my reading goal. But I think 150 books is like a good pace for me. That's like three books a week. And that is like typically, so it's like a book every other day. And I think that like overall it's a good pace for me. I do that reading goal just to keep me reading. Because I have a tendency to slip into like lulls. And so the reading goal and like having something that like kind of paces me out. And like when I open my story graph it tells me how many books I am behind. is helpful for me. If reading goals aren't helpful for you then don't make one. Um, another reading goal I want to read more five stars. My reading this year I had a lot of one and two star books. And like that's not cool. We don't want that. Like if it's, a book is going to be one star I should just not read it anymore. So... Those are my big reading goals. I also want to read more debuts. My book is coming out this year. And because of that, I've made a lot of friends in the debut author community. And I'm excited to read so many of their books as they come out throughout the year. So get excited to read those. I've already read one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the books I read this month is a debut that comes out in June. I got to read it early. <laughs> I know. Fancy author. Have a great one. I will talk to you soon with my next video should be, hopefully if everything goes right, should be all of the books I cried while reading in 2022. I like did that video last year and it was one of my favorite videos to make. Um, I did, again, cry lots, cry plenty in my 2022 reading. So should be a good video. Should be coming out soon. Me tear ranking all the tears I cried. <laughs> um, that is all. Have a great one. I will talk to you guys in the next video. See ya later. Subscribe if you want to. Bye. <laughs>